Welcome to my vlog. For those of you who don't know, I have a party rental business that started from here. So this is where it all started. Uh, here's a video from December 10th, 2019. I was so proud of all this stuff. And I'm proud of myself back then for sticking with it. Good job, Lee. Good job. So uh, we have many cocktail tables here with uh, Liquor Covers. They're on sale right now. So um, check us out. Uh, we've also got chairs and tables and glassware and fancy love letters. For those of you who don't know, I have a party rental business. And because of hard work, it now belongs right here. What's up guys, it's Lee here, the bartending photo boothing rental guy. And uh, quick little thing, uh, ran out of magic racer, so I'm using Vim Power Shine and uh, these scour pads and it's working pretty good cleaning these uh, filthy chairs that customers are bringing back. But I'm not that worried about because I do charge a damage waiver on all of my rentals now and that makes things all better. Of course, my amazing rental program Bookable helps me do this automatically. What do you do when customers return things broken, damaged, dirty? And the answer is absolutely nothing within means. Let's get into it. All right, realistically, let's think about it. How often when people return things dirty or uh, semi-broken or just like a little nicked up, how many times do you actually charge them? Or do you just sit there and scrub and, you know, be angry and then uh, by the time you're done being angry, you are just like, whatever, I'll just just let it be, right? Then you forget about it and you're like, oh yeah, whatever, you know? Uh, you cool down, right? Well, this way you don't have to, damage waiver. I was scared to charge the damage waiver, uh, but everyone in my area does it, so why not just follow suit? And then when I started doing it, I realized people don't care. People want insurance, so why don't you give them the option? And then the people who don't want the insurance, they can opt out for it. And then you explain to them, hey, like you opted out for this, so anything happens and it's on you now. And then you don't feel like such a weirdo saying, hey, you owe me $15.34. And now the next question you must ask yourself is how much is the right amount to charge? Do you charge 5% on your full order? Do you charge 10%? Do you charge 15%? There's people in my area, pretty much all of them, charge 15% uh, on the full order. Um, some of them charge eco fees, uh, you know, $5 extra on top for tablecloths. They throw in all these extra charges and it's not bad. It's just, it is what it is. And they're big companies, it works for them. So who cares if they do it? If someone wants to pay, then that's great. Anyways, it works. You need to add these little imaginary costs into things so that you can get by because uh, it helps with the price wars, right? There's, there's price wars, but there's a way around these price wars. So uh, just by hiding your prices and things. So if your tent is priced uh, without walls included, without delivery included, it's a way to battle the price wars. If uh, you have to add weights onto your pop-up tent, if you have to add gutters, you have to add things separately, it's your way into the customer's mind. And then once they start paying, they don't wanna switch anywhere else if you give them good service. So um, charge damage waiver, just do it. But you cannot price things too low. I cannot stress this enough because you will devalue your industry. Um, I believe that I did it an okay way when I was coming in because I offered things that weren't available at low prices. So pop-up tents from Walmart uh, for $35 each. Then, yeah, that's absolutely great because uh, it's not hurting the bigger companies and the people who would go out and buy the tent normally are coming to rent it to me anyways. And that's how I uh, got up in the rental industry. But when you start doing Shivari chairs and they're worth, you know, $12, $15, maybe that's a little extreme, they're worth $10 a piece in in your industry uh in your area and then you come in and offer them at six well that devalues the industry right in order for those other companies to uh get those bookings they're gonna have to lower their prices and then by the time that you realize that like six dollars after having to clean these and like them going out every weekend they're just not worth six dollars anymore and as you grow bigger you start to realize man I gotta charge more for this stuff. Okay, so when I show you these numbers, please don't think of it's me as bragging because, uh, well, I made $160,000 so far this year. Um, what I have left to show for it, uh, pretty much, because it's all invested in everything, right? Uh, invested in more inventory to, um, 
uh, for next year, invested in uh, my dead season, right? So throughout winter, uh, I need money to pay for my bay, to pay for all my bills, my mortgage, my vehicles, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, 160,000. Well, if I was charging the 10% damage waiver uh, at the start of the year, instead of just recently, like the last month or two or whatever I've been charging for, then I would have an extra uh, 16, thousand dollars that I would be able to do stuff with because um, I really didn't charge people for any damage that was coming in so I'd be up all that money then I'd have sixteen thousand dollars to buy another tent with buy another buy this buy that pay for that that pretty much pays uh, for my bay for the whole year is yes, you know the sixteen thousand dollars that that would pay for the bay for the whole year I mean what could you do with that extra ten percent um, other than cover your ass if things break. So I don't know, something to think about. I think if you try it, you won't regret it. Um, people take you more seriously that way. They want, they want the insurance. That's my video for today. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you like my content, please sub to the channel, press that like button. Let's try to get this uh, video in the algorithm. And uh, as always, you stay classy. Secondly, look at these propane heaters, just like those ones up there. So I'm starting to transport them in half. There's just three, three or four little screws that go in there. And now they can load up easy. You can just uh, saran wrap two together, the top part and the bottom part. And then the little gas part just feeds through the pipe there and into the bottom of the base. That's it, that's all.